Hey, it's me, Classstar, and unfortunately there's no stream today because I'm going to be gone this whole weekend, but there will be a stream next week. But what I have done is I presented a video for you, and this video is going to be the top 5 best maps for beginning players to play. So I want to keep this into a short and sweet, so this is just self-explanatory, just if you're a beginning player, you know, like you're not good enough to play solo, or just you're new to zombies, these are the top 5 best maps for you to play. And I know most of my top 5's have just been about maps, so just comment in the comment section below right now what other top 5 should I do that doesn't include just top 5 maps of some sort, just anything else. So with that, LET'S GET INTO THIS! In the number 5 spot, we have Der Eisendrach. One of the main attractions of Der Eisendrach is its bows, but as a beginner, you may not be at that level to build a bow yet, so no problem. This map is very simplistic compared to all the other main Black Ops 3 maps in the sense that you only have to open 3 doors to power and the pack a only requires you to press 2 buttons in 2 different locations. You also have the Wondrous Fear transportation system which is very useful for escaping a red screen situation or getting a new shield if you're in the courtyard. For this reason, if you're able to get a shield, I highly, HIGHLY recommend you build it in this room so you don't have to worry too much about a horde of zombies being right behind you because if you use a Wonder Sphere, the zombies will respawn so they're not going to be right where you are. You get a shield, you go back in the Wonder Sphere, and then you go back to where you were without the zombies getting in your way. The fact that it's on Black Ops 3 makes it even more suitable for you because you can have it anywhere but here and an in-plane sight assuming you don't have the Mega Gobble Guns at your disposal. Those will save your life. This is also a great map to practice training, because the courtyard is one of the easier places to train in in zombies, so as long as you keep this door shut, you're fine. If you feel like your skills are improving, you can even try starting up a game where you actually try to feed all the dragons to obtain the Wrath of the Ancients bow. And if you start to feel even more pro, you can even try to upgrade that bow, and then I'd probably recommend you get the Storm Bow, because it's one of the easiest to make, and it's, in my opinion, maybe one of the best. To me, the Reisendrach is like the stepping stone between the more complex maps of Black Ops 2 and 3 and the more simplistic maps of World at War and Black Ops 1. The only thing that makes this map not as high on the list is that there's not very good places to get into a corner and just camp without an OP weapon like the bows, and the Panzer Soldat can be very tough to kill if you don't have the proper setup. But I recommend before round 12, because that's when the Panther comes, is try to get a strong weapon from the box, such as maybe the Haymaker, the Brecky, Dracon, or even the Dingo. I know there's more, but that's just what came to the top of my head. Then try to pack a punch it by then if you can, and obtain Double Tap 2.0. And if you can do that, you don't have much to worry about. So when round 12 happens, and that Panther comes down, and then you have the Death Ray on, and then he gets trapped into the Death Ray, what you gotta do is use your weapon and shoot him either in the chest in this little yellow thing or in the head and you're completely fine, nothing to worry about, boom, you killed the panzer. Well if you don't manage to kill the panzer with the death ray, then you should probably try to go back to the courtyard and just train him around, avoid the shock charges, and then just shoot him down in the most opportune times. So with that, the Rassendrach in my opinion is almost perfect for beginners, which is why it might be one of my favorites of all time. But that panzer can be real lethal sometimes, which is why it only gets no higher than number 5. In the number 4 spot, we have an on-disc map, and this map is Kino der Toten. Kino is the map that a large portion of people start off their zombies careers on. Such a classic. It may be an easier time on Black Ops 3 just because it has gobble gums, double pack punch, and better perks, but since not everyone is able to have Zombies Chronicles DLC and only may have the Black Ops 1 disc, I'm only going to be referring to the original. But you know what I mean when I say Black Ops 3 is also included when I put in the number 4 spot. Okay, so enough with that. But did you know that Kino der Toten was supposed to be on World at War as DLC 4? Just imagine having Black Ops 1 without Kino der Toten and then being stuck with 5 as the only map to play. And I'm sure they would have had another map to come into that spot. But just imagine it not being Kino der Toten! So starting off on 5 would be a very difficult task. Not saying it's bad at all, it's just a veteran made map. Like, this is the map right here, Kino der Toten that people usually became good at before branching off to other, harder, more difficult maps. And the reason for that is because of the stage training spot. This stage is such a good place to learn how to train 
And if you don't know how to train here, just train the way I'm doing it right now. If you're just a beginner and you don't know what to do, just come along this stage. And if a zombie just comes right here where the curtain is and he tries to ruin your day, either practice your jukes, oh look at those jukes, or you can try to shoot them down quickly before he gets to you and before he ruins your day. And the best thing to do for all this practice is to obtain the thunder gun from the box. Just try to get the hang of training. Just try to get all 24 zombies into spawn. Then if you have a hiccup along the way, you got a thunder gun to bail you out. So it's as if you're about to die, but no, you didn't die. You learned from your mistakes, but you're still alive. So you can still continue training. And ammo should not be too big of an issue because you got dog rounds about every four to five rounds and you get a max ammo after every dog round and the dogs aren't that hard. And the pack punch is so easy to get to. All you have to do, press a button here. Come over here, press a button here. There you go. Pack Punch is available for you to use. Just use a teleporter and you're there. So with that, Kino is an all around great map for improving as a zombies player as well as just having a fun time getting to high rounds. And if you don't feel too confident with your own skills, just remember, you've always got that thunder gun to use when you need it. Coming in at the number 3 spot, we have another on disc map. And this is gonna be Town. First of all, Town is such an easy, simple map, only having three different doors and two different box locations, so it's very easy to navigate. Plus, you have all the zombies' essentials within this map, including five perks and six if you play co op, and a pack punch is right in the middle of the map, so it's not that hard to find. Plus, there's no zombie boss like the Panzer Soldat or the Margwa or whatever that's gonna ruin your day, so you're good with that too. And another thing you can get which is completely optional, but very useful, is the Galva Knuckles right here for 6,000 points, and it's a one knife kill until round 14. So in terms of orders of operation within this map, what I recommend is to come up here where this door is and open this door first, because this door has the Jagannoch, so you already got that out of the way, you don't have to open the door, you got it when you had the points to get it. And the other thing is that you also got the MP5 here, it's a decent weapon, so instead of hitting the box and maybe getting the war machine or the SMR or something that's not going to get you points or be good, you can guarantee yourself to have a decent weapon. So I'd recommend you buy that first, just in case. Then once you got the MP5, save 750 points for this store right here. Then when you can, buy Quick Revive because you might need it just in case you go down. And then you're going to camp up here and just try to save a zombie each round if you can. And if you do, if the box isn't there, you can go over to the box, get a good weapon if you want, and then even buy double tap because that's going to help you a lot. And if you have a lot of points, you can even pack a punch, which is going to help you tremendously. But something I'm always going to be telling you when you guys are camping is to always aim for the head because you'll kill them much faster that way. And if your aim isn't at that level yet, try aiming for the neck until you feel more comfortable to go for the head. But the great thing about this camping spot is that if you ever get overrun, you can just jump down here and just try out your training skills. There's two spots on this map that I recommend training on. There's one right here which is kind of by the stairs that leads up to Jug. And this, believe it or not, is the place where I actually learned how to train. This is my first ever training spot. And all you do here is just kind of run around circles the way I'm doing it and then just having an occasional double back when you need to. And then this other training spot is a little bit more intricate because you gotta do a figure eight kind of train. But it's probably easier once you get the hang of it though, and it's the one right in your stamina. But if you're doing a figure eight train just like I'm doing here right in this gameplay, you should be fine, you shouldn't die as long as you're doing it right. But if you do decide to train here, I highly recommend you do not open this door. This door does have speed cola, but the cost of these training spots, I don't think it's worth it. This is actually one of those areas where it has two doors to open it, and opening one of them opens both of them. So the other door is here, and if you open this door, it automatically opens the other door. So just don't, don't even try open either of them, alright? So for this reason, Speed Cola might not be the most viable option as a perk for your loadout. So it would be ideally probably Jug, Double Tap, Stamina Up, and Quick Revive. So with that, I think Town is very worthy of being at number 3 on this list. The only reason it didn't make it higher is because the fire can be a huge nuisance, especially as a beginning player. And even the zombies being caught on fire then them exploding right in front of your face can be very, very lethal to one's health and to one's potential of surviving in the game, which is why it only makes no higher than number 3. Coming in at the number 2 spot on this list, 
we have the giant. And this map has been made much easier than ever before, which is perfect for new players. You've got Gobblegums, you've got Double Tap 2.0, you've got Double Pack-a-Punch, and much stronger weapons. The same argument can be made for any other map that's been brought back to Zombies and Zombies Chronicles, but none of them has made as much of a difference in difficulty, except maybe for Nocturne, and Tolton, and Verux, but I feel like those two maps are still hard for a beginner player even with those upgrades. But because of these upgrades on the Giant, camping on the catwalk is made much easier. And I know what you might be thinking, oh, so you just put Giant at number two spot because you just sit on the catwalk and shoot in one direction. And I say, yes, but not completely. This is a great practice for learning how to consistently get headshots, and even lining up your shots to get multiple zombies kills at a time. So this strat right here is exactly how I improved my aim and became accustomed to getting headshots, which alone is why I think it's worthy of being this high on the list. Because the ability to consistently get headshots from my own experience is one of the most important skills to have, except maybe aside from the ability to train. So in order to use these strats, you've got to get to this point in the game first. And for the early rounds, I think it is best for you to camp right out here in front of the door near the power switch. In this spot, you have the door to open just in case you get pushed back, or you can try to do some training to rack up some more points. But past this door, let me give you the secret right here, it's the catwalk. And I only recommend you don't start camping at the catwalk until you at least have a decent-ish weapon and double tap 2.0 if you don't already have that decent of a weapon. And at the end of each round, I highly recommend, especially if you're a beginning player, to save a zombie and then you can do things like get more guns or even more perks or even work on linking all the teleports to the mainframe in order to get Pack-a-Punch. So once you open up Pack-a-Punch, just save up for it and Pack-a-Punch whatever weapon you desire. And if it's any weapon other than the MR6, the Ray Gun, the Wonder Wop, or the XM53, you can even double pack a punch it for 2,500 points. With this setup, you can get to mid 20s no problem if you're camping on the catwalk. But depending on what weapon you have, camping could become a little bit hectic by about round 25 to 30. So if this happens, you may have to practice some trains. Training can be very difficult in this map, however, but I recommend if it comes down to this, to either have the Wonder Wop or a weapon with dead wire. And then always have either in plain sight or anywhere but here, or any of the other OP gobblegums, but just assuming that you don't have all the OP gobblegums, either one of these two. And then just in case you get trapped, you always got one of these, and you're home free. The way you'll do this train is in a circle like this, and I don't expect you to get this on your first try, or your first couple times, because it is a little bit of a veteran spot. But if you see a pack of zombies coming right at you, and you know you're gonna die, you can't outjuke them, then you just double back, and then just keep continuing on with your train. But the thing that's gonna make this train very hard is those dogs. If you see those dogs, you wanna probably try to kill those as soon as you can, cause they're gonna mess you up. And I think this map was almost near perfection in terms of what's a good map for a beginner player, but because the training can be a little bit difficult, I think the giant just comes shy of number one, but number two looks like a very good place for it. And finally, in the number one spot, we have Ascension. So like I said with Kino, the Black Ops 3 version of this map is obviously easier because of Gobblegum, more perks, and double pack punch. But we'll just be referencing the Black Ops 1 version just for convenience sake. This map is the ultimate training spot central of zombies. There are so many viable training spots, most notably the Lunar Lander by PSG or Wales Wine depending on which version you play. The best part about this spot is that instead of having to go through a long process within the map just to get here, all you have to do is open one door from spawn and you're already here. Just grab the MP5K or the RK5 off the wall and you'll be able to last at least 5 or 6 rounds here even if you're not that great of a player. But I recommend highly, highly especially for this map that you save a zombie each round if you're a beginning player so that you can do things like turn on the power, use the box, get perks, and activate pack punch using the Lunar Landers without having zombies get in your way because you don't want zombies to be in your way. This map also has a thunder gun just like Kino Dertolton, so you could practice building a full train and then if you get trapped in the process, the thunder gun will bail you out of that bad situation that you might be in. The only thing that can be a pain is the monkey rounds, but as long as you have the right strategy, it's easy to manage. The two most important perks to guard are Quick Revive and Z Juggernaut. So what you do 
is you come all the way back here to spawn and wait for the monkeys to come where you are. If you do manage to make it through the round though without them touching the machine, not only will you get a free max ammo, but you'll also get a free perk. That's so nice. But with Ascension, this Lunar Lander spot is so spacious, with zombies only coming from three directions. If you're gonna learn how to train anywhere, this is a place to learn how to train. If you think you're improving with your skills and training, and you want to move to something a little bit tougher, go down to Pack Punch if it's open. It's almost just as spacious, but there's just more zombies coming from different directions. Then if you really want a true challenge, try training by Stamina. This is probably my favorite place to train in all of Ascension, because you have the trap over here, and the zombies come in quicker. And if you do get good enough, try even training here without the Thunder Gun. And that's going to take some true skill that I don't even think I have. So the thing is, whenever I have any kind of friends or people who aren't that great at zombies ask me which map I recommend them to play in order to either improve their skills or just have a fun time without having to worry about dying, I always, always recommend Ascension. So with that, Ascension undoubtedly comes in at number one. There are so many maps I wanted to put on this list, but just didn't make the cut. So here are some honorable mentions I have, and I've got four of them in this video. The first one is Farm. For the longest time, I had Farm at the number 5 spot, and I switched it with the and Drach at the last second, because Farm really isn't that easy of a map. There's nowhere to camp, and the training isn't that easy unless you're quite decent at the game. Plus, there's no Pack Punch, and there are no ultra powerful weapons unless you have the DLC 3 with the Reagan Mark 2, but as a beginner, you might not have that. And then the second honorable mention is Buried. Buried is widely known for being the ultimate noob map because the bank and the paralyzer, but for a beginner, the process of getting all this stuff and having Leroy break things and build things for you felt a little bit overwhelming, or at least it did for me when I was a beginner playing this map. And without all those goodies though, this map can be a little bit difficult for a beginner. Then the last two maps that deserve an honorable mention is Knock Down Tolton and Bus Depot. The reason these are honorable mentions is because they're very easy and simplistic concepts of maps just jumping into a game and surviving for as long as you can without worrying about the complexities of zombies. However, neither of these maps made it onto the list for one obvious reason, and that's because it's hard. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found some insight of what maps to try if you're the type of player who struggles to play zombies solo. And I only made this list just to help you guys. I did assess each and every map when making this list, but what other maps do you think are good for beginners that I didn't mention? Just let me know in the comments if I forgot anything or just didn't account for something. I I'd just like to know. And remember to follow me on Twitter at the Claystar and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Claystar, if you want to. I, I don't really care if you do or don't. I recommend you do, but if you don't, that's okay. But with that, I'll see you in the next video!